I've just discovered the best way to use AI in Excel and it's not what you think. I have this spreadsheet that tracks deliverables for my team. It's built with VBA, it's very custom, and I've been refining it for years. It's like my baby. But lately I needed to upgrade it fast. So I've been experimenting with using AI to help me. Here's what I learned. AI can be a really powerful assistant to help you as you're building spreadsheets, but it should not do everything for you. In my experience, if you just drop your data into an AI and let it take over, you lose the ability to debug, to modify, to improve based on suggestions from your team. And those things are so valuable. You just don't wanna lose control of the spreadsheet like that. It'll come back to bite you, I promise, because you won't know how it works. So the real magic is finding that sweet spot, letting AI handle the heavy lifting for you while you stay in control of the logic, the structure, and the design. That way it's still your work, it's just faster, smarter, more efficient. So let me show you how I struck that balance and how you can too. Now you may be thinking, yeah, that sounds great, but my spreadsheet is a mess and I have no idea where to start. That's exactly why I created the Excel Power Up Method Cheat Sheet. It's a free resource that walks you through the same process I use to renovate, disorganize, or inefficient spreadsheets step-by-step. Step. You'll see the best upgrades at a glance, things that every single spreadsheet should have. I'm talking about Excel tables so that you can build smarter systems without getting over you can keep it on your desktop for quick reference as you modify, build, and upgrade spreadsheets, or maybe even print it out if you're old school. There's a link below. Hi, I'm Rebecca, and I teach Excel users how to create spreadsheets they can be proud of. Welcome to Excel Power Up. Quick disclaimer, I'm going to use the term AI in this video because there are just so many choices of which AI tools you can use. I personally use Microsoft Copilot. That's just because I'm kind of a Microsoft girly, <laughs> and it's built into my Windows 11. But all of this can apply to ChatGPT. I know many people who use ChatGPT and any other AI tool that you prefer. I like to always give practical examples. So here is a demonstration spreadsheet that we will be working with. So let's follow the Excel Power Up method to build this spreadsheet, and I'll show you how I use AI to assist me. So the first step in the Excel Power Up method is data organization. So we're going to start with the primary purpose of this spreadsheet. You can see I've already laid out some of the columns that I want, and I'm gonna start with AI. Here is my co-pilot window, and you can see I've set up a prompt where I'm starting with the, I am building a spreadsheet, and it includes the primary purpose of the spreadsheet. That's very important for data organization to keep that in mind. We're not just building something that, um, can house all the things. We just want to be really focused on what is the primary purpose. And I like to describe the uh, sheets that I have in the in the spreadsheet. I'm not going to just drop the whole thing in. You can, but in my industry, which is um, clinical data programming, that is not okay. You cannot just give AI anything that could relate to your business. So, I mean, you can come at me in the comments, but I don't give... AI my entire spreadsheet, but I can like describe it. And the tip I have here is to ask AI for advice, ask for ideas. This should be a conversation. So you can use AI like a sounding board um, and just see what they say and go back and forth. Um, here are some good ideas. Program overview, that's interesting. Status dashboard, I definitely want to do that. A log of notes. This is so interesting because, you know, I have this spreadsheet that I'm describing already fully formed for my team, and I do have some of these. I actually have a status dashboard, I call it a study summary, and I have a QC log or notes, it's called the comments log archive. That's interesting. So my first tip is, as you can see, use AI as a sounding board. Start with the primary purpose of the spreadsheet. Now back to Excel. Um, the Probably the number one thing I always do with data organization is to make all of my data into an Excel table. So with your data selected, go to the insert tab and click on table. My data, my table does have headers, so I'm clicking, checking that. And then I, I want to change the style here. Um, anyway, that's not super important. <laughs> but I always do that as part of data, data organization. Now you may be wondering, 
what, well, this is totally empty. What am I going to do here? That's another really great use for AI. And that is using AI to generate test data. If you're building something from scratch that will be used by people, it may not have anything in it. And that's so hard to build a spreadsheet when you just have a completely blank table. So I, I always recommend generating test data, but using AI is a really, really awesome use for it. So I would start with a prompt like, can you generate test data? Always uh, give Excel the or AI the name of the table. Uh, that's just a free tip for you. <laughs> and then you should describe what is going into each column. Um, this is sort of adjacent to the data cleaning step in Excel Power Up method. Um, since we don't have any data, there's not really much, there's nothing to clean, but we can think about the type of data or type of information, the format of all the values that are gonna be in each column. So uh, we have this output column and I'm describing exactly how I want it to be. I'm saying one to 10 because I want 10 rows. Um, and telling what the titles should be, the QC status, anything that has only a specific number of values. For example, something you'd want to be in a drop down menu, tell AI the exact um, values and let's see what it generates. Okay, very interesting. That does seem like exactly what I wanted. Here we are. Another thing about data cleaning is um, setting the format of any date columns. So I actually do like this one, but if you wanted to change that up, you would come up here to number, more number formats and select a different date. Actually, let's just change it for fun. And that all looks pretty good as far as data cleaning. The next step in the Excel Power Up method is data analysis. And that means taking your data and setting up any summaries that you want, like a total row or some kind of percentage calculation or even an extra helper column to do some calculations on the data. And if you're looking for ideas for this, you can ask AI, but you can also, an easier way is in Excel, there is this button called Analyze Data and it's on the Home tab. I don't think it was built with AI, but now it has AI, certainly, because you can ask a question about your data. When you click on it, it will take your exact table and suggest questions and also give you pivot tables. And if you click this insert pivot table button, it will actually build that pivot table for you. So I'm going to ask the question about percentage distribution of QC status, and it gave me a pivot chart, which that that comes later in the data reporting step but i'm actually going to include it because i think that's really awesome and i probably do want that in my um data data reporting step so now i will demonstrate another way that you can use ai which is just back to our copilot and that is using ai to suggest a formula for something that you need to summarize in Excel. There are so many different summary formulas and it can be hard to keep track of them. So using AI is kind of like Googling, but it's so much better. It's so much more intelligent. It's also kind of like going to your coworker who's an Excel wizard and just like picking their brain. So can you suggest a formula? Here's my prompt to use that will help me to count the number of rows that are QC passed. There we go. You can use count if. So it actually does give you formulas. However, what I don't like about this is that it's given me a standard cell reference for the range. So I want it to, um, to actually give me the column names. So I'm going to say, uh, oh, actually, pff, it's t it's so smart. It knows. <laughs> it knows that's what I want. And it tells me if your table is formatted as an Excel table, which I always recommend you do, and this is the name of it, you can use a structured reference. So let's copy that. And I actually forgot to show you that I named this table. So let's do that now. And I'm going to use exactly what AI said, tracker table. I probably wouldn't include the word table, but that's how it is. So, um, so let's put this formula here 
And you can see since we use structured references and we named the table exactly this, it already has the correct column selected and we're using count if, which is counting the number of rows that match this criteria. And the, and the answer is four, so I'm gonna write QC past here. And there's a very quick little summary. But another cool thing that you can do because we're having this conversation with AI is to add um, conditions to your formulas. And instead of you having to figure out where to put that in or whether you should change formulas, AI will do that for you. So I just said, here's the prompt. What if I only want to summarize a QC past rows that have a due date populated? And then it says great refinement and um, suggests the count ifs function. Now, um, like I said before, I don't like using these kinds of ranges. I really prefer structured references. And wouldn't you know it, it did also suggest the exact same thing, but with structured references. So if your AI doesn't do that, you may want to add a another prompt or a reminder that says like, please use structured references and make sure you give AI the table name and all the column names. Um, so now let's see if it worked. I'm going to remove the due date here and see it did decrease that number. So um, another tip here is um, every time you get a formula from AI, you must test it out, especially as you get more complicated because it could totally be missing the plot and you wouldn't know unless you test it out. The next step in the Excel Power Up method is data reporting. You may remember we just made this pivot chart, which is awesome for data reporting. And one thing I always suggest with charts is to use these buttons here, the chart elements and chart styles, and just play around. Once you get the chart, um, play around with these with the style, like, hmm, do I like this? The cool thing is you can hover and it will change based on that. If you feel like, oh, I don't like how this looks overall, you can come up to the design tab and go up here to the quick layout. And this also is, you can just hover over it. Oh, I like that better. I really like how the legend goes away with this one. I don't like having that legend or the axis down there. I don't, okay. And I like the data labels here. So play around with this quick layout with this add chart element. It's just so fast. That's This is not AI, by the way. <laughs> but what is AI is, let's say, I don't know how to change the order of these. I have QC passed, in progress, and QC failed. But I want in progress to be at the bottom. So how do I change that order? The great thing about AI is you can use it to ask these questions that um, would be difficult to Google. Like you could try Googling it, but it would just take a long time of sometimes like, I'm sure you've experienced this, you like, you read through forums, you're reading through Microsoft, um, Microsoft support, trying to figure out what's the name of this option or this uh, task. So here's the prompt that I've given it, and you should try and include as many details as you know. So I do know that this is a bit of a chart. I know it's a bar chart, but then I don't know how can I change the order of items. And I love this AI gave me some options. You can sort directly in the pivot table. That doesn't work because it's not alphabetical. Uh, manual reordering, which I think this is the one I will go with, or you could use a helper column. And it's so cool because since I've been talking about this spreadsheet, it kind of just intuited, it, it knows <laughs> that this is the column that I'm worrying about. So what I'm gonna do is go to the pivot table column and or the pivot table here and manually reorder. In progress, QC passed, I want to be at the top, and QC failed. And the last step of the Excel Power Up method is user features. So the first thing I like to do with user features is add some buffer. Just It just gives the, the, the spreadsheet some breathing room. It just makes it immediately look better. So I always do that. Um, you can do some like quick formatting. Um, the other thing that I like to do is freeze panes. If this was going to be a big table, um, you, you want the header, the top part to stay as you scroll down. 
And this is the the number one thing that people ask me about, um, like family members, coworkers, anybody who knows that I do Excel, they're, they will text me or, or message me like, hey, what? how do I make it so that the top row doesn't move when I scroll down? And that is the actual perfect thing to ask AI. So you can see that I'm putting this prompt in and it's it's kind of sloppy i don't know the words freeze pains i don't know that i need to use the word freeze so i'm just using like human language to describe what i want and then ai is going to tell me exactly what the terminology is if you're not like an excel guru and you don't know all of the words then you say oh i have to click on freeze pains in the view tab um the excel ribbon is also kind of it can be hard to manage so it's uh, really helpful to have kind of a roadmap to, to see like, oh, it's in the view. See like exactly where is this thing that I know exists, but I don't know where it is. So that's what I'm going to do here when I scroll. There we go. Before we wrap this up, another great place to get ideas on how to power up your spreadsheets is my Excel power up cheat sheet on how to improve any spreadsheet. You can see that it's laid out in um, or by Excel power up category. So we have data organization, data cleaning, data analysis, data reporting, and here we are at user features. So it's a great little resource that I've made and we can look at this and say, oh yeah, I remember drop down menus. So let's go back to our spreadsheet and quickly make a drop down menu out of this uh, QC status column. So we're gonna select it, go to the data tab, and then find the data validation button. And all of that is on the cheat sheet list. And then I'm gonna just list the options in progress QC. Oh, I did something. Uh, you know what I did, I okay, space. It was a, a flick of the <laughs> keyboard. QC failed and QC passed. There we are. And now we have a delightful user feature, a drop down menu for my users um, to, to use this column. That's it, my expert advice on how to use AI in Excel in the best way possible. Don't forget, if you want a clear roadmap for building smarter spreadsheets, check out the Excel Power Up Method cheat sheet in the link below. And if you wanna go even deeper and skyrocket your Excel skills, check out my online course, the Excel Power Up Method. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments how you use AI with Excel. Uh, I would really love to hear about your experience.